What is up enthusiasts? It is Cedar Flags here and welcome to a video I have been waiting to make all year long. It's finally December and I feel like I should be making my top 20 roller coasters. Now in years past I've made top 10, but I feel like my coaster count is big enough to make 20. I have ridden a total of 93 roller coasters and I have been to 11 major theme parks in the past few years. I have ridden some pretty elite roller coasters so this was a pretty hard list and this list is definitely full of some surprises as well. So, without further ado, here is my top 20 roller coasters of 2020. Now let's go to number 20, which is a B&M. It is Kraken at SeaWorld Orlando. This is by far my favorite B&M floor list out of the few I've ridden, and I absolutely love this ride. It provides everything I want in a B&M floor list. It has a long layout, a nice layout, a variety of inversions, a lot of head choppers and near misses, and an incredible setting over the lake. At the number 19 spot, we have Candemonium at Hershey Park, the B&M Hypercoaster new for 2020, and I was pretty disappointed by this ride, even though it still delivered a great layout. I was expecting something like a B&M Hyper much higher on this list, but I did not get it. It provides some good floater airtime if you do sit in the back though, and it definitely delivers some great positive and negative Gs. At the 18 spot, we have the first Giga on this list. It is Orion at Kings Island. I was pretty disappointed by this ride as well, but some of the elements have a lot of great floater airtime. In fact, from that first drop to the end of the ride, I felt nothing but great floater. And floater's just not my thing. If you're a huge floater fan, then you're gonna absolutely love this ride, but for me, it was so-so. Just across the park is the number 17 spot. It is Banshee. I love me some Banshee. Banshee is my favorite B&M invert because in my opinion, out of the ones I've ridden, it is the most forceful one I've ridden. It is by far the longest one I've ridden and it just feels like it never stops. From that first drop to the final break run, it keeps gaining speed. The top speed of this ride isn't achieved until the bottom of that pretzel knot. That is how great this ride is when it interacts with the terrain and it just has so much for a B&M invert. At 16, we have Ravine Flyer 2. Definitely a contender for my favorite wooden coaster, but there are a lot of factors that bring it down, including its roughness, but its setting is incredible. On the side of Lake Erie and on top of a ravine, this is an incredible ride with some of the best airtime I've ever experienced on a wooden coaster, and probably the only ejector airtime I've experienced on such a great wooden coaster. I was really deciding between 16 and 15 a lot, but number 15 is Mystic Timbers. I slightly prefer this over Ravine Flyer 2 for a few reasons. First of all, it feels like it's a better layout throughout. It has a lot more forceful elements near the end of the ride, while Ravine Flyer 2 seems like it slows down. Second off is the incredible smoothness of this ride. Ravine Flyer 2 is a little jittery at times, but Mystic Timbers is absolutely butter smooth. In fact, for a wooden coaster, it blows my mind how smooth it is. But overall, this is a great ride and my personal favorite wooden coaster. Number 14 is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood Park. Now, this would be a lot higher on this list if I didn't get a few crappy rides last year when I didn't get the greatest airtime but in years past, I've gotten some incredible, forceful airtime. In my next year's list, this might go up drastically, but for now, it fears at this spot. Coming in at the 13th spot, we have Steel Curtain, the other hypercoaster at Kennywood, and this ride just has a very well-rounded layout. It has some of the best inversions I've experienced on a roller coaster, and the thing it focuses on most, it does it extremely well. It also has some complimentary airtime, and has a great first drop, being the tallest inversion on Earth. At the 12th spot is Mako. Remember at Candemonium when I said that a hypercoaster does it better? I feel like this is basically a better version of Candemonium. It's a lot more forceful, it has a lot more forceful elements, and it has greater airtime in my opinion. This ride does lack a little bit in the second half, but the first half is good enough to put this ride on the top 20 in my personal opinion. At the number 11 spot, we have Diamondback at Kings Island. Man, what a ride. This is my favorite B&M Hyper and my favorite ride at Kings Island overall. It has some great airtime, and if you sit near the back, you'll get some good ejector. This ride has a very long layout as well and provides everything I want in a B&M Hyper, including that amazing splashdown at the end. Starting off the top 10, we have Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. Oh my goodness, what a ride. This ride is very short, and I am a sucker for duration, but I got to appreciate what this ride has in its 20 seconds nearly. It has one of the most intense launches on Earth, an incredible top hat that takes your breath away, and by the end of the ride, you are wondering what the heck just happened. At the number 9 spot, we have Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. 
the far better intimidator in my opinion. This ride focuses solely on positive G's and a few floater elements of airtime, but as someone who likes airtime over positive G's, this is a lot lower on my list, but I absolutely adore this ride as well because I do like me some positives every once in a while, and this ride nails it at positive G's. So if you like positive G's, go to Doswell, Virginia and ride yourself some Intimidator 305. At number eight, I know this is going to be pretty controversial, but it is Fahrenheit at Hershey Park in Intamin, I guess you could say Eurofighter. This ride is incredible. This ride from start to finish provides some insane positive G's and is very, very underrated in my opinion. Plus it has some great airtime at the end and you can't forget that first drop in the back row. At the number seven spot, we have Fury 325 at Carowinds. Now this ride, in my opinion, has the perfect variety to satisfy everyone. You want low to the ground elements? They have it. You want floater? They got it. You want ejector? Near the end of the ride, they have some pretty good ejector bunny hills. Oh boy, get ready for this next one. It's very controversial. At the number six spot, we have Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. That is right. I don't get why this ride gets a quarter of the hype it deserves. This ride from start to finish is truly an incredible experience. From the first drop to the final bunny hills, you have great ejector airtime. Some of the most forceful ejector airtime you could experience on a coaster and it has some pretty forceful elements too. Now, it is here to note that I did not ride Storm Chaser on my Kentucky Kingdom trip because it was closed down, so Lightning Run is the only elite ride I got to ride at Kentucky Kingdom. Coming in at the number six spot, we have Skyrush at Hershey Park. This ride has some of the most intense airtime I have ever experienced on a ride. From that first drop that in Taylor Bybee's words feels like a car crash, to the incredible Stangle Dive and the twisted airtime near the end, and those Camelbacks, this ride is non-stop. This ride feels like I-305, but instead of positive Gs, it has some of the most intense airtime moments on the planet. If you sit on a wing seat, you will get one of the most disorienting and amazing experiences you could ever experience on a roller coaster. At the number four spot, we have Maverick at Cedar Point. Now, remember when I was saying that this would be a better version of Fahrenheit? Well, yeah, this is the ride I was talking about. Maverick is a full experience. From the first drop, which is incredible, by the way, to the final break run, you are immersed into this incredible Wild West-like experience that is truly one of the most disorienting and forceful experiences you will have. Starting off the top three, we have Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. Now, I feel like this would be most comparable to Storm Chaser, even though I didn't get to ride it, but oh my goodness, what an insane ride Twisted Timbers is. It is the best small RMC you could possibly imagine. At the number three spot, we have Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. Now, I feel like this would be very similar to Storm Chaser in both layout and pacing. People love Storm Chaser for its incredible pacing, but I got to ride this on a 100 degree day, and let me say that the pacing was absolute top notch. Some of the most insane airtime on earth is on this ride if you ride it on the right day. Those three camelbacks pin you out of your seat. Those airtime moments on the trick track double up absolutely pin you in each direction. And don't even get me started on some of these airtime hills in between. At the number two spot, we have Millennium Force at Cedar Point. Very controversial pick, I know. But I feel like this ride does everything Fury 325 does, but better. It has the perfect variety for everyone, but at the same time, I feel like it does everything Fury does, but better. It has more forceful floater airtime. It has some great ejector airtime near the end of the ride. And if you sit in the back row, this will be a very forceful ride for you. I have grayed out many times on that overbank. Plus, when you look at the other Cedar Fair Gigas, they are placed on flat plots of land completely filled with grass, and it's not that appealing. Millennium Force goes through tunnels, over water, and beside Lake Erie. When I first rode this in 2013, I was sure that this was going to be my number one for a very, very long time. And I knew that only something as great as Cedar Point could beat that. And in 2018, Cedar Point sure beat that with my number one spot, Steel Vengeance, Cedar Point's crown jewel and out of all the coasters I've ridden, easily my favorite. I'm a huge airtime junkie and this ride has everything for the perfect airtime junkie. This ride is almost 80 seconds long and throughout the ride experience, you are out of your seat for nearly 30 seconds. This ride is a great variety from some of the most long drawn out ejector in your life, to some quick bunny hills that will fling you all over the place. This has everything I ask for in a coaster. And when it comes to airtime, you are flipping over every single direction. You have sideways airtime, hang time, right side up airtime, and banked airtime, off axis airtime, ejector airtime, some of the strongest ejector airtime you could experience. And even talking about those first few elements alone, that outward bank turn, 
that insane top hat and that first inversion, you are wowed even at that point. The rest of the ride flings out throughout the structure. And oh my goodness, this ride is just an unforgettable experience for any coaster enthusiast alike. It is my number one coaster. And there are a few coasters that I do think could beat it across the world, but I'm not sure. It's definitely a gamble. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a video about that. But that is my full list. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know what you think is your top 10. And let me know what you think in general. This is Cedar Flags, and I will see you all later.